Hello all, welcome back to Learning Partner. If you are new, please do subscribe. This is another channel where you can directly connect with me. We have around 1000 plus members already who are working. We take live coding sessions and everything so to just get notified about those sessions. Please do join this group and check out this website also where you can find so many project ideas with live version, proper flow, diagram and APIs and documentation and all. So let's start with the video. So in the last episode, we have seen how we integrate the gate API. Now in this video, we are going to move ahead with the post API. So gate API is normally used to get the data from the API and what, wherever we have to display that, we use that data. But in for post API, let's say we are talking about the users. So gate all user might be the API to get the user and that uh, whatever the data we get that we will display it in the table. But what if we have to create a new user? So in that we have to use the post API. So this is a swagger. This is just the URL documentation I have. This is my own API. You can use it. Now over here, if you see the budget plan controller, here we have some API for the user. So get all user. This API will be responsible to get all the data from the API. If we click on execute. So see, this API is returning some data. That data we can showcase over here. And after get all user, we have add new user. So this is a post API. So this API, we will use it to create new record. Fine. So let's just quickly integrate this gate API. Then we will start with the post operation. So this is my API. So let's copy. This is the component I have created. Basic UI just I have created. Now inside that we have to create, we have to integrate our gate API first. So I will be creating a, I have to create a state. So constant user list method use state i will initialize that with empty array then we have to create a method which will be responsible to get the data get users and this method is going to make the api call so we have to add async over here now constant Result is equal to await exois dot gate. We need to pass the URL. So this is my URL. And then we need to store whatever the data we get into this array. So set user is the method which we have to use. res dot data dot data. Because from my API, I'm going to pass the object in that data is the property where we have the array. Now this function, we are going to call on this button click load user. So on click function so if you see the ui we have this button on click of it we are going to call the gate api because we have not seen use effect so once we see the use effect we are not going to need this button also but for the time being we are using like this so whatever the data i get that i'm going to hold in this this state now we just have to iterate the tr so curly bracket user list dot map item index we are going to need the index also because we have to print the serial number and this tr will go inside my return statement return round bracket over here so first in the first id we have to show the index plus one because index will start from zero then we need curly bracket item dot so whatever the things we are getting from the api that we need to display so let's see what things we are getting so username then we are going to display email. So email ID, always try to copy paste. Then we have full name and the project name. That's it. Let's try to save and check if we are make, able to get the data. So I'm just opening the network tab. So once we click on the load data, we will be making an API call. Once API call is success, you can see that data is visible over here. So currently we have around 150 record. Now this is the gate API. Now over here we have the form. So on click of save user, we should be able to create new user. So for that, we have to see the object which we need to send to the gate API, uh, post API. So this is the object which we need to send. So let's copy it. Now we have designed the UI, form is created. Now we have to create the state. So constant user obj set user obj 
use state. And in this state, what we are going to store our object. Now inside that, this is uh, the object with some initialized value. So let's, instead of string, we will initialize with empty. And from this, created date, you don't need to, you don't need this in the form. So you can just initialize the basic initial date. And just like that, we have refresh token also. Here also, we can integrate the same. Refresh token, you just have to send it empty. Rule and everything, we have it. So in case of API, all the API object, let's say if we are talking about employee, employee ID will be there. In case of product, product ID will be there. In case of user, user ID is there. So this is the primary key. Primary key is we have to send it as a zero. Now, we, have, we need the one function which will be helpful to update the value of this state so constant update form value just like we have done in the state and we will need a key this function we are going to call up from the on change event of all the text box what we are going to do we need to set this object round bracket old obj round bracket curly bracket dot 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 old obj square bracket key and then value we need to pass so event dot target dot value like this now this function we need to call on all the input elements so quick way to do it let's write it over here event function it has it will have two parameter event and then some key now on all the input input element i need to add this so what i can do i can search by this class i will copy this and i will replace it with the same thing replace also you can see everywhere i have done the copy paste now what we need to do we just need to pass the key Key nothing but what are the fields we have. So username over here, then email ID. Then we have full name. So full name will go over here. Then we have role. Then we have password. So whatever the objects field we have that we need to pass it over here. And last one is the project name. So project name is not mandatory with my API, even though whatever you send, I'm going to insert the budget tracking only. That was for me. So what we have created, let me just minimize this. So we have created object. We have created a function which is going to update this object. And this function we have called on on the input elements on change of event. Fine. Now on click of this save button, we are going to integrate the API. So let's right click on save user let's create this function constant on save user again from this function we are going to make the api call so let's make it a sync again same thing constant result is equal to await exoice dot post api for post api we need to send two parameter url and the object so this will be url URL will be same till now over here. Just the method name will be changing. So method name is add new user. So let's copy. And it will go over here. And second parameter, we need to send the object. So object is nothing but the state because we on the form change, form value change, we are updating this state. So this state will go over here. That will make our API call. But if you see my API, how you will need, uh, how you will understand that API call is success or not. So by checking the result property. So some specific code you need to write. So if condition res dot data dot result property you need to add. If result is success from the API, we will say alert user created success. Or in the else, we will have the error alert. And error also, we will get it from the API only. So result.data.message, you will use it. I will showcase you the scenario also where we need this code. Fine. So basic thing we have done. Now let's just test it. 
So on the page load, we will be getting one API call. Sorry, on click of this load data, we will have an API call. We have got the record. It's around 150 record we have currently. Now I have to create new record. So let's say test one one. Email ID, let's say test at the red gmail.com. Full name, test, test, role, let's say user, password 112233, project name, anything you can pass, but from API side, I'm going to hard code something. Now, if I click on save user, let me just add a debugger to our function also, control P user dot JS. So this is our API call. So let's add a debugger over here. Now on click of save, you can see user object has all the data, whatever the data we filled into the form that got assigned to our particular that field into our object. So this object we are passing to be getting stored. Let's add a debugger at line number 30. Once we continue and once API call is success, here you can see result.data, result property we have got true, correct? So if true, we are showing them pop-up. Now with the same data, let's click on load data again. So now at the last, you will be able to find your record. See, so now uh, username is unique in my case. So if username, the same data I'm passing, okay. If I try to create another user with the same username, I will get the error. So now here you can see in result dot data, result property is false. And in the message, we are getting the message like why API got failed. So it will go to the else block and we are showing that username already exists. But now if I change the username to two, now user will get saved because only username I'm checking, like it should be unique. So now if you see result.data, we got it true. Continue. So this is how you make the post API call. So here uh, in the network tab, URL you will be able to see over here. What data you are passing, you will be able to see over here in the payload. And what is the response you get that you will be able to see in preview or response tab. So that's it with the post API. Then the left part is update and the delete that we will cover in the next episode.